Hi guys, it is another cold winter day here in the end times in the former paradise of South Austin, Texas. And the little dog is wanting to go for a walk, but he's going to have to wait. The little dog is going to have to wait because it is Saturday, the first Saturday in 2017, Saturday, January 7th, 2017. So uh, lucky little dog, he gets to listen to my, to 2017's first clueless moron roundup rant where I simply go on the pages of the mainstream media in the opening days of 2017 to see how this planet's collective IQ is heading directly into the toilet. Good God, I've got 25 stories to talk about today. Not sure I'll have time to get to all of them. Uh, but we're going to dive right in. Little dog. No, hush. Hush. Thank you. We're going to dive right in. You know, guys, I have never... You're all eco-Nazi simply because I don't give a shit uh, about transgender rights. Don't, don't get me... I do need to come back and do some... Uh, do, do some redneck, southern, white male uh, on transgender rights. I haven't ever done a, a rant simply because I don't give a fuck about transgender rights, but I do give a fuck about this. Uh, I want to lead off today's rant. California funds first U.S. inmate sex reassignment. A 57-year-old convicted killer, this guy's my age, serving a life sentence in California became the first U.S. inmate to receive state-funded, and apparently they don't know how much, it's around $100,000 is the best estimate, state-funded sex reassignment surgery. Uh, Prison officials agreed to pay for the surgery for Shiloh Heavenly Quine, who was convicted of first-degree murder, kidnapping, and robbery for ransom, and has no possibility of parole. This is Chris Hayashi, executive director of the Transgender Law Center. Quote, for too long, institutions, by institutions, meaning taxpayer-funded prisons, taxpayer-funded prisons have ignored doctors and casually dismissed medically necessary and life-saving care for transgender people just because of who we are. All transgender people who have ever been denied the medical care we need said the surgery fulfills a landmark legal settlement. And off we go, and it looks like this $100,000 will mostly be the bill will be passed off to the American taxpayer. That it is actually federal taxpayers, $100,000 going uh, to do whatever they're doing. But, you know, I, I am supporting uh, cutting the balls off uh, of these fuckers in prison. So I don't know, Hambone. Uh, maybe you need to reconsider this rant. M moving along, transgender rights. Fuck you. Anyway, uh, what is Donald Trump? What's on Donald Trump's plate? Okay. <clears throat> President-elect Donald Trump has a lot on his plate ahead of his January 20th inauguration, but between filling his cabinet, sorting out policies, and preparing to move to the White House, he somehow found the time to tweet about the new Celebrity Apprentice. 
Trump's first tweets Friday morning were about the drop in ratings for the NBC reality TV competition, for which he controversially has remained executive producer. There you go. So that is what Donald Trump uh, is thinking about on Twitter, is the ratings for a TV show. And, you know, I don't... This is probably the last chance I will be able to talk about uh, Vice President Joe Biden. Biden to Trump. Grow up. Vice President Joe Biden told President-elect Donald Trump Thursday to grow up. Yes. Uh, grow up, Donald. Grow up. It's time to be an adult. You're president. You've got to do something. Show us what you have. We will see about that. But talking about people telling Donald Trump what to do, don't forget Barack Obama telling Donald Trump what to do. Barack Obama strongly urges Donald Trump to, quote, protect the dreamers, protect the dreamers in his immigration plans. Yes. Thank you, Obama, asking Donald Trump to protect the dreams of people moving to the United States. I, I think the Statue of Liberty might have something to say about that. Oh, shit, I don't think my battery is going to last through this rant. All right. I just had a separate rant about these, uh, the, these clueless fucking morons kidnapping and torturing this guy and putting it on Facebook. <clears throat> so what is, uh, how is Obama weighing on, in on this story? Obama calls the Facebook live attack despicable, but says he is optimistic, optimistic about race relations. Yes, uh, Barack Obama is optimistic about race relations in America as Donald Trump uh, makes his way into the White House. Or is Donald Trump moving to the is, is Donald moving to the White House, or is he staying in his little gilded chamber in Trump Tower? Um, but we, you know, Donald Trump is not the only one taking to Twitter to brag about himself. Here we have, on his way out, Barack Obama highlights all the achievements of his presidency on Twitter. There you go. I, I believe, I think I remember, I've never uh, tweeted in my entire life, don't you have not 140 words, but 140 characters? So, Barack Obama, I guess, managed to put the achievements of his eight years as president in 140 characters. Oh, shit. Guys, I'm going to uh, have to go. Uh, so, I'll just keep talking while I go find my, uh, I guess, your clueless moron over here thought that he had his uh, computer plugged in when uh, obviously the whole time I was putting this rant together uh, thinking my battery was charging, it was discharging. This is this is a Luddite doing a uh, a clueless moron roundup rant. Uh, yes, little dog, I'm trying to get there. Okay. Now that your clueless fucking moron Luddite has uh, got his little gadgets back together, let's see, what are our friends at the CDC? The Centers for Disease Control. The Center for Disease Control 
kid mishandling of deadly germs. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, among other things, also carries out research work on deadly bacteria, viruses, and pathogens which have been or can be responsible for epidemics and pandemics. Hush! Out of here! No! Jesus, this little dog. Alright. So, in, in part of their work on, uh, on epidemics and pandemics, and don't forget the shit that can be used for bioterrorism, but it turns out that the CDC has not been exactly safe in its handling of some of these pathogens, and worse still, it has been hiding its mishandling. Yes, uh, and among other things, this report uh, reported on what it called a biolab operator which has among the worst regulatory histories in the country, which includes everything from boxes containing potentially deadly pathogens gone missing to possible biological exposure. This is how your tax dollars are at work getting the Center for Disease Control to control diseases. Uh, I, I thought of actually leading off this rant with this next story coming out of Mexico. Mexico gas price hike spurs looting and blockades as unrest spreads. Uh, anybody who does not understand that it is the price of a gallon of gas is perhaps the single number one most important thing on clueless fucking morons minds. You can fuck with anything else, but do not fuck with the clueless morons price on a gallon of gas or this is what you're gonna get. Mexicans angry over a hike in gasoline prices, looted stores, and blockaded roads on Wednesday, prompting over 250 arrests amid escalating unrest over the rising cost of living in Mexico. 23 stores were sacked, 27 blockades put up in Mexico City, Blah, blah, blah. Uh, it, yes, I could do a full rant. How many rants have I had over the price of a gallon of gasoline setting off full-scale riots for the clueless morons? All right, here's the annual story on this that we go through every year, threatened bluefin tuna fetches $632,000 at Tokyo auction. A $600,000 price tag may seem mighty high for just one tuna fish, but if every torpedo-shaped tuna costs that much, Perhaps the species would not be teetering on the edge of extinction. Yes, yeah, so for this critically endangered uh, bluefin tuna, which is still, what are they saying, 97% collapse in its population, these clueless fucking morons paying $632,000 for one fish to feed these clueless goddamn morons over there in, in Japan as the, as the bluefin tuna swims off into extinction. 
What is Janet Jackson up to this week? Janet Jackson gives birth to son at age 50. Pop superstar Janet Jackson gave birth to her first child at age 50 on Tuesday. Janet had a stress-free healthy delivery and is resting comfortably. DDD from Janet Jackson to some little village in India. Finally, we, we get some good news from the overpopulation uh, front. Village intervenes after couple refuses to stop at 17 children. While the world's most populous nation, China, has restrictions on the number of children a couple can have, which India, which is fast catching up with China on the people count, soon to become the single most overpopulated country on planet Earth, does not impose any such laws on its citizens. As a result, many Indian families do not see it as a problem to keep producing children until a boy is born and sometimes an entire village has to intervene to halt the juggernaut. It does not give the details how the, the villagers convince this couple not to, uh, not to go for uh, number 18. And the fact is they already had a boy. Uh, so they can't use that excuse. Anyway, I'm hoping they intervene by holding the clueless fucking moron down on the ground and cutting his balls off. I'm hoping that's the way they intervened. Now, from overpopulation to, uh, again, this was almost, I almost did a whole separate rant on this year's Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas. Uh, good God Almighty, guys, I, with all of the ink being spilled on this one, I could have done an entire Roundup rant on the Consumer Electronics Shows. This is just, I, I just threw a dart and came up with this news story. These are the most incredible new TVs unveiled at CES 2017. Trends come and go every year at the Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas. One year it's tablets, the next year it's wearables, then it's the Internet of Things, drones, and smart homes. But uh, don't worry, we're just back to the good old TVs on display that make us drool un controllably. This year we have seen some particularly drool-worthy televisions shown off at CES. And in this post we'll cover the best of the best. Okay, there is no question and we mean none whatsoever that LG's new line of signature OLED TVs stole the show at CES this year. These TVs are ridiculous. They should not exist. Science should not allow them. LG's new OLED TV is 2.57 millimeters thick. We will pause for a moment to let that sink in. 
And we're going to move from Las Vegas to Israel, where we see Israel's flying car passenger drone moves closer to delivery. After 15 years of development, an Israeli high-tech firm is optimistic that it will finally get its one and a half ton passenger carrying drone off the ground and into the market by 2020. This is the Cormorant. The Cormorant. Uh, priced at a cool fourteen million dollars from Israel I guess to the Caribbean Sea as we see carnival cruise lines turning cruise ships into smart cities at sea yes uh, carnival on Tuesday introduced an ocean medallion designed to tailor trips to individual passengers by learning their taste and onboard habits and even keeping track of their roaming children. Uh, so these clueless fucking moron uh, cruise ship passengers I guess put this thing around their neck this medallion capable of whispering wirelessly to a web of onboard sensors the medallions are designed to help cruise operators anticipate guest needs their needs making note of say a favorite wine the medallions let the crew know where clueless morons are and where they might be heading, helping with tasks ranging from unlocking cabin doors for guests to anticipating which pools or restaurants might need backup staff. Medallions also act as wallets charging purchases to people's shipboard accounts. La -da -da. From smart cruise ships to toddlers. A toddler causes chaos in a CNN studio because that is what toddlers do. This one, guys, uh, I had no clue what this, uh, what this headline meant. Congressman's teen son grounded after dabbing, after dabbing during swear-in photo with Speaker uh, Ryan. Uh, no clue what, I am the clueless moron in here, so I had to read this story to find out what the hell dabbing is. Dabbing is a dance move in which a person extends one arm out diagonally, puts the other arm across their face, and looks into their elbow. Is this dabbing? Uh, the move entered the mainstream in the United States after NFL quarterback Cam Newton used it for a touchdown celebration. And now the, uh, the lines of clueless morons. Uh, okay, from dabbing to what are the cops up to this week? Lawsuit, police wrongly killed a man at Alabama Animal Shelter. A federal lawsuit claims that police in Dothan, Alabama needlessly killed a man 
who had gone to an animal shelter to drop off a stray dog. Uh, cops were called to the shelter when Robert Earl Lawrence refused to show his driver's license to uh, the staff on December 30th. Uh, yes, uh, so this is one of the, the, this guy was one of these sovereign citizens. Yes, uh, so th this man refused to show his driver's license to the dog catcher. They called the cops. Uh, the cops got there, took Lawrence to the ground, uh, and after he refused to show his driver's license, uh, they first they stun gunned him, and then a second officer arrived to help, drew her weapon, and shot Lawrence in the abdomen. He later died of the gunshot wound. Yes, the so-called sovereign citizen movement includes many clueless morons who actually believe they are immune to most state and federal laws, including paying taxes and getting driver's licenses, much less showing your driver's license to a dog catcher. Uh, Lawrence had committed no crime and was not under any obligation to show his driver's license. So this is what, if you try to drop off a dog at the dog pound, if you try to take your little emotional support animal to the dog pound, you will die. Okay, as long as we're talking about cops, Sheriff who admits meth addiction charged with stealing meth. A newly elected West Virginia sheriff who admitted to authorize that he was a meth addict was charged Tuesday with stealing the drug, the drug from a police evidence storage area. Okay, from cops to Kylie Jenner. What is going on with Kylie Jenner and the clueless morons that follow her on Instagram? Have you ever wondered what Kylie Jenner eats to kick off her day? Have you ever wondered what Kylie Jenner eats to kick off her day? We've all seen the 19-year-old cooking up a storm on her Snapchat account, and now we know exactly what she makes for herself and her boyfriend, Tyga, each and every morning. And it's actually very simple to replicate. The three magic ingredients breakfast sausage, eggs, and rice. I cook the eggs and rice together in a pan. Sometimes I add cheese, and in a separate skillet, I fry up the sausage with a little olive oil until it's well done. Seriously, that's it. If you want a little extra flavor, sprinkle some garlic on your sausage. And it goes on from there, but I think I run out of time, so just I'm going to go down. This is the second uh, week in a row. Uh, last week from the Philippines, now we have it coming from Canada. <clears throat> Pilot found passed out drunk in cockpit just before takeoff. All uh, right, from Canada to Florida, Florida officials say 10-year-old boy killed himself after mom sent him to his room. 
Okay. <laughs> Anyone who doesn't see the humor in this story, from Sub-Saharan Africa, Gambia's electoral commissioner flees country. The head of Gambia's electoral commissions has fled to Senegal due to threats to his safety after he declared that President Yahya Jama lost last month's election, a defeat the ruler has refused to accept. I love fleeing to Senegal for your safety. Back to our own country, hotel guest plummets 10 stories down boiler shaft to his death. Here, back in Florida, man attempts to burglarize Florida spy shop that sells surveillance cameras. Take a wild guess at how the cops caught the man attempting to burglarize a spy shop. But we're going to wrap up uh, 2017's first uh, Clueless Moron Roundup rant in Thailand, uh, where this will be the first of many of these. Snap! Self Selfie-seeking tourist bitten by crocodile. A French tourist was bitten by a crocodile inside a Thai national park as she tried to get close to the fearsome animal to take a selfie. Dee -dee -dee. There will be many more of those stories, but I've got to wrap up this, uh, my first edition of my clueless moron round up rant for 2017 because I think the little dog might be uh, might be pooping on my bed. I don't know where he's gone. He, I got I got bigger things to deal with in my life than clueless morons. So I better get the hell out of here and find my little dog. Bye guys. Little dog, where are you?